Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I wanted to do a um, matrix color palette and I play mainly with the row of oranges. It's really sad, I knocked this off my vanity and shattered a couple right before the video and had to deal with a broken heart while I was filming. So. Anyway, I don't think there's much to say. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks for watching. And if you want to see how I got this beautiful bronzed look, then just keep watching. I am starting off with the shade Chickadee here, this orangey shade on a fluffy brush. Okay. So I'm just taking the shade Chickadee on a fluffy brush through the crease up to the brow bone area. And remember these shades are really, really pigmented, so a little goes a very long way and it may take a little bit of extra blending because they're so pigmented. You may get a little bit of those like skippy marks initially, but if you just give them a little bit of extra love and attention, they blend out beautifully. I love this shade. And I'm not taking that all the way to the inner corner. I stop about where the brow bone ends because I want that inner corner nice and open. Okay, I'm moving to a smaller fluffy brush in the shade Morocco, right underneath Chickadee. Ooh. Okay. That's a little more red than I expected it to be, but it's fine. We're going to make it work. It's still beautiful. It's more of like a rusty kind of orange. And with this one, I'm not as precise about it. I put it on the outer corner, kind of tap it in and then blend it into the crease. Again, stopping about where that brow starts. So leaving that not inner corner nice and open. But before I move on, I am going to go back to that first brush and just go between the two in the crease just to make sure the tones blend together seamlessly. Especially because I feel like that first, the first shade Chickadee is more of a yellow orange, more of your traditional orange. And the second, and the second shade Morocco is more of like a red orange. Okay. Once those are nice and seamlessly blended, I'm moving to the smallest fluffy brush. This one's from the Sigma Precision Kit. It is an E36? E36, I believe my numbers are wearing off. And using the shade Brick House. And because it's smaller than any of the other brushes that we have used so far, it is going to be the most concentrated in the crease and give us the most depth. If this one gets on the lid a little bit, that's fine, but I really just want it concentrated, mainly in the crease. Now, I don't want to bring it over as far as I did the first two shades, so I am not bringing it over further than the iris, okay? But over here, it can come all the way out to the corner of the eye. But I just don't want to follow that like natural shape of rounding it down because then you can end up with like droopy eye. So if you bring it all the way out on this outer corner, you want to keep that depth like elevated where the brow bone is. Does that make sense? So today's tragedy when I dropped my palette was the shade Legend. It crumbled, but most of it managed to stay in the pan when it shattered. So I was able to press it back together. I am going to use just my ring finger in the shade Legend and press that on the lid starting in the middle 
where we still have some bare area. This shade is very similar to Amber Lights from MAC, but it's so much softer. I really, really like it. Now, I'm not bringing this shade all the way up to the crease because I don't want that shimmer to transfer into the crease. I want that crease nice and bronzy and smoky, okay? So, just about halfway up the lid, and I'm not even bringing it all the way over to the inner corner because I'm going to save that for later for the inner corner highlight. Now, I'm going to add my inner corner highlight after I do my foundation, so let's go ahead and move on to the lower lash line. I'm just switching to a pencil brush. If you prefer a la lower lash line that's not as smoked out, use a brush that's much smaller. But I am going to use these three shades and work backwards from lighter to darker on the lower lash line. For eyeliner, I'm using Max Liquid Lust Eyeliner. It's the most waterproof eyeliner you'll ever use. Just a little kitten wing, not too much. Apply a few coats of your favorite mascara. Now, I've already applied my skincare. I'm not going to do a primer because I don't have one that I'm loving right now. I've still really been liking my Eau Maquillage Woke Up Like This. And I'm blending that out using a wet beauty sponge from e.l.f. Is it just me or does anybody else feel like you like pound the crap out of your face whenever you use a beauty blender? Like I don't notice it until I go back and edit my videos and I'm like, dang girl, chill out. I'm spot concealing using the Il Maquillage Fucking Flawless Concealer. I really like this. I love the way it wears, but I will say that I'm going through it rather quickly. Like, much more quickly than I normally do. I always add a little extra coverage there just because I have a little bit of melasma, if anybody's wondering. I know it looks funny when I do my concealer stash, that's why. I totally started blending and my camera had start, stopped recording. Oops. I want to keep it pretty simple on the face. I don't think I'm going to cream contour and highlight conceal and all that stuff just because Jesus the southern humanity like does not agree with all that no matter what primer no matter what setting spray no matter what setting powder like it's just not loving it so 
I am all about some minimal product on my face right now and truly just spot concealing and foundation, just, just the basics. Just the basics, okay? I'm setting that using my Maybelline Fit Me Powder in the shade Light Medium. And you'll notice I didn't put any concealer or any foundation under my eyes. That's on purpose. I am going to use a separate product there, not necessarily for coverage, but just to brighten a little bit. If you have super dark circles though, you will want to cover those up before you do any powder. For bronzer, I'm using Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer, even though I'm pretty sure it's breaking me out. And this makes me so sad because I love it so much. You guys have not really seen me use another bronzer on my channel. Um, not much anyway recently. But I feel like the older I get, the more sensitive my skin gets. So I think it may be the fragrance. But I started noticing some pretty, I mean not heavy breakouts because I don't really break out a whole lot anyway, but the places where I was getting like minor breakouts were all places that I put my bronzer. So I'm pretty sure that this is what I narrowed it down to. For contour, I'm using this shade Shadester from MAC. blush I'm using the shade French blush from Lancome. I have talked several times about blush placement and how I like my blush further back because I feel like it gives a look like a lifted look to my face and kind of slims it down a little bit. Gives like a sun-kissed bronze kind of glow. Um, however if your face is super super thin and long then you don't want to do that like you'll want your blush more here blush placement is very personal I feel like just like brows or anything else is more personal you have to find what works for you so well I highly suggest this color don't think I'm crazy and don't know what I'm doing just because I put my blush back at my hairline but make sure wherever you place it that it is nice and blended down into that bronzer and contour because we don't want Neapolitan cheeks. That is not a thing. That is not cute. For my under eye, I'm using the Hourglass, what is this? The Hourglass Veil Translucent Powder because it has a little bit of a glow to it. It's not going to cover, but it does have just a little bit of a brightening effect. But I love the way that this lays. I love, oh my gosh, Hourglass powders are probably some of the prettiest powders on the market. Now you're gonna pay for them, but my God, they're beautiful. But look at the difference already between this eye and this eye. And I didn't need a concealer, I didn't need a foundation, I just needed a smidge of this brightening powder. And that's it. But like I said, I'm not super dark under there. So this is just enough to give it a little extra oomph without being too much. For highlight, let's kick it old school with some Becca Champagne Pop. Just a smidgen though, not too much. And even though this is a powder, I'm still loving it with my finger and I've talked about before having an application finger and then a blending finger
For my inner corner highlight that I promised you, I am using this shade called In the Spotlight. Because that's such a small area, I'm using a very small brush. This one is the E46 brush from Sigma. And just barely on that inner corner and work it into that amber shade small amount of that under the highest point of the brow. For lips, I'm doing a little backwards stuff today. I'm using this shade ca called Mademoiselle Place, number 232 from Lancome. It's a nice peachy nude, and speaking of peach, that's what it smells like too. It's not too peach. But it's not too pink either that's what I love about it it's that perfect like my lips but better color I love this it is creamy it is glossy you will have to reapply it's not a stay on all day color I'm going around that with the shade boldly bare liner And this is another one of those like pinky, peachy nude shade. But doing the liner after, but applying the liner after kind of takes down that intimidation factor a little bit and it softens it a lot too. That way if you don't want such a defined harsh lip, this is it. But you still get a little bit of definition, you know, you still get that precision. Okay, so this is the completed look. I'm going to go finish getting ready and I'll be back to film my intro and outro and chat about the thing. Okay. I gotta quit playing with my hair. There were so many hair flips in my try on haul that you can make a drinking game from it. Take a shot every time I flip my hair. I promise you'll be drunk in the end of the 12 minute video or whatever. It's fine. So, so this is the completed look. Get a little Grammy for it. Play a little slow music. I really hope you like it. I really, really ended up pleased with this look. I wasn't sure what I was doing, as is the case with most looks that I do. But I did decide not to add lashes just because, you know, who needs them on the daily, right? I think that this is a look that you don't necessarily have to have lashes for. So... I am pleased with the look without lashes. If you wanted lashes, I think it would be beautiful. Like some Demi Wispies, some um, House of Lashes Iconics would be beautiful. Some um, Lily Lashes, the Miami Lashes. Any of those like, like flared out lashes, cat eye lashes would be beautiful with this look, but they don't need it. Truly, if you put them on, they would cover up that little kitten wing. But anyway, enough rambling. If you liked this video, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you next time.